There are three words that will make 70% of anime fans shiver and scan the room for the nearest exit. Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online capitalises on the thought that every single person who plays games has ever had. What if I was inside of the game and is that technology even possible? Well, considering Sword Art Online was set in the time of as of today would have been like two years ago. Yes, Sword Art Online was set in 2022 and instead of getting cool headsets that transport you into your video games, we got COVID-19. Another win for reality. Pretty much upon its release in 2012, there has been so many criticisms thrown the way to this anime and it has been the punching bag of the community for about 12 years. But is it actually that bad? Well, the short answer is yes, but for the sake of nostalgia, I'm gonna give you a long one. Before I get into it, I just wanna say that I'm aware that Sword Art Online for a lot of people is the first anime they ever watched and actually got them into the anime fandom. And if that's the case and you really like Sword Art Online, that's totally fine. Don't let people tell you you can't like something, especially if it's just nostalgic for you. You don't need a reason to like Sword Art Online. If you like it, you just do. Although I can see why people do like Sword Art Online, it has some glaring issues. I think the concept of being trapped inside a digital world is super cool, but the way it was executed was just terrible. Why this turned into a harem series, I will never know. So if you don't know what a harem series is, uh, not to be confused with not being halal, it's basically an anime or a video game that has multiple female characters romantically interested in one man who's usually our main character or the person you're playing in the video game. So Sword Art Online's biggest shortcoming was shoving the romance element down our throats. And how our main character Kirito has the personality of a Ritz cracker but somehow still manages to gain the affection of multiple women throughout the series, including his sister. It's almost like Kirito as a character is the writer's self-insert. By the way, uh, the writer actually has two sisters in real life. Just thought I'd let you know. Kirito gives me the vibe of a character from an Otome game. Apparently the male version of it is a, a gal... a galgi? I have no idea. All I know is I butchered it. Which are romantic visual novels in which the main character is so bland the player can insert their own personality and really immense themselves in the romance element of the game. The writer of this series, Loki making a self-insert character of which said self-insert character receives romantic feelings from his sister while the writer has two sisters in real life was just not the law I wanted for this series. This is not what SAO branded itself as, but it's what a lot of people view it as. If I drag it down to basics, potential is the reason why this anime is so hated. The mixture of having a loaded concept that people are interested in, amazing scenes and character design, mixing gaming and anime together, which often have a lot of crossover fans. The fact that they had all of the tools they needed for a truly memorable anime, but they dropped the ball so hard in the name of fan service has to be one of the reasons why people dislike it so much. To say Sword Art Online isn't memorable, might piss some people off because 12 years later, here I am making a video about it. But if we compare it to the likes of Attack on Titan, Tokyo Ghoul and Death Note, which I remembered fondly, while SAO people make videos like the one I'm making right now. And it was probably one of the most divisive animes while it was airing as well. You either really loved Sword Art Online or you hated it, so I'm dubbing it the Marmite of the anime community. So, what exactly is Sword Art Online? Well, let me remind you. It's the year 2020 and a brand new gaming system has developed called Nerve Gear, which was developed by Kayaba Akihito and mostly funded by the US and Japanese military that enables players to fully control their game avatars, being able to control their actions with their brainwaves and fully links to their nervous system. That's actually pretty cool. Can't wait for that to happen in real life. Or maybe not, because the game Sword Art Online was created for a sinister reason. SAO takes place in the digital world of Aincrad, an RPG with the usual likes of bosses, leveling systems and guilds, and a gorgeous sky. Sorry, I'm a whore for graphics in games. 
However, the coolness of Aincrad is short-lived as the player's logout feature is removed from their player interfaces. To make a longer convoluted introduction to the story short, thousands of players are now trapped inside of the game SAO unable to leave unless they either complete all 100 levels or die. And if they die in the game, they die in real life. Something about microwaves or something. <laughs> I really don't get the mechanics because, uh, <laughs> why would I get the mechanics? But it's not important. Also, their avatars have been changed to a more accurate representation of what they look like in real life. This, as you would imagine, causes a massive panic and hundreds of players die trying to take their headsets off. However, our cool, calm and collected, totally not overpowered main character Kirito was actually a beta tester for the game. And because of this, he's played the game before, so he knows a lot of loot locations and how to access the early quest. So he goes off on his journey to complete it. It's also important to note that you're not in danger 100% of the time in Aincrad, because there's actually player safe zones where you aren't able to die. Well, um, there's, there's a bit... There's a bit of a loophole in the series, but I'm not talking about that today. I mean, you could always go watch it. If you haven't seen Sword Art Online at this point, what the fuck are you doing? So because of these safe zones, a lot of people just kind of shackled down for their new life in Aincrad. I mean, normies, what can you do? They're everywhere. After two months of the players being trapped in Aincrad, 2,000 people died. A meeting is summoned in order to team up to take on the levels because I guess... Yeah, I have nothing sarcastic to say about it. That's actually a grand idea. Sucks it took them that long to come up with it. It's here that we get a bit of a glimpse on the social issues that they're having inside of this new world. There is an overarching hatred towards the beta players coming from the regular players because they believe that they are hoarding resources and information and they basically blame the beta testers for like the reason people have died, which is a stretch. You know, life isn't fair even in video games. I am loving the social commentary that is sweeping into this anime. It's kind of a good think piece on the pay to win game. Yeah, I'm kidding, I'm not getting into that because I uh, don't give a fuck. The regular players are demanding information out of the beta players, yada yada yada. He's a beta tester and a cheater. He's a beater. A beater. Yeah, that's good. I like it. <laughs> okay. You can call me a beater. Just make sure you don't confuse me with those beta testers anymore. How can you... Everything about this character just makes my ass leak. Kirito is so cringe in this scene, I'm sorry. Beater. Yeah. Meat beater. English dub L, maybe? Why do they always pick these harsh, ear-bleeding American accents for these roles. It's so strong, nails on a chalkboard. Also, not to be that kind of person, but the female characters in this series are just pure wank. Asuna was a beacon of hope only to be shot down by Kirito's mediocrity. She was strong and opinionated and kind of had her own character building, but yeah, what can you do? She just becomes another like subservient love interest in Kirito's journey. And that brings me to the biggest issue I personally had with getting into the series. I just could not get attached to any character in this series. Because to put it bluntly, all of the characters are there for Kirito and have absolutely no substance outside of it. The characters either love him and admire him or absolutely hate him and there's no in between and that's a sign of poor writing. Look at me being actually analytical. Don't worry, I'll never do that again. The characters in this anime even the main character, of which we are supposed to be rooting for, has the depth of a puddle. For an anime that has character deaths, the stakes are just so low. I was never sad by any deaths because, well, it's not because I'm an edgy edgelord, it's just they literally had no character outside of Kirito, and even then they had barely any story relevance. Kirito's biggest character development moments aren't even good either. He joins up with a group of players hiding his level from them. I can't really remember his motivations for keeping his level a secret, but I refuse to watch this anime again, so maybe it's something to do with the, like, hatred of the beta players that I was talking about earlier. 
uh, but that's just a theory. But anyway, the members of this guild end up dying and Kirito blames himself for this why? Because he hid his real level and knowledge from them. He was around double their level at the time, maybe like I think it was 40 at the time, and the guild had walked into a trap in one of the levels. They became surrounded by mobs, and since Kirito was a higher level, he was able to kill mobs in less hits, hence why he survived. After he lost his friends, he pretty much refused to join parties or guilds. He was a lone wolf, single player, cool guy. That is until Asana convinced him to party up with her. And that right there is the only deep thing about Kirito and Asana's relationship. And I'm being dead serious. Like actually think about the series. That is the extent of depth in character. That Asana is the only party Kirito joined willingly after he got traumatized from making connections with other characters. I'm not joking. They have absolutely no chemistry. In order to have romantic chemistry between two characters in Sword Art Online, the two characters would have to have some kind of personality or relevance outside of Sword Art Online. Both Kirito and Asuna don't have that. In the manga, Kirito was this socially awkward guy who you watched slowly burst out of his shell and become like a better person than he was in the beginning. Kirito starts out one way and stays that way until the end of the series. Sure, Sword Art Online has an amazing concept, but that's about all I can give it credit for. That and the beautiful scenery throughout the anime. The only thing, and I mean this so literally, the only thing that was keeping me watching this anime was Aincrad itself. I wanted to know more about Aincrad. I didn't give a fuck about the other characters. Who's behind it? Why are they behind it? What's gonna happen when someone reaches the 100th level? Like, you know, Heathcliff, aka the person who made the game, is the only interesting character in this whole anime, and he's introduced so late in the story. He has more depth in his character than our male and female lead times 12, and he barely had any screen time. I couldn't have given a rat's ass about what happened to Kirito and Atsuna, or any character in this series of which I can't even remember the name of because they literally do nothing other than push Kirito to the end of the story. I know I'm ranting a lot about this specific point of characters, but it's just so frustrating. <laughs> because in my opinion, if the characters were even a little bit better, it would have been such a good series. Characters are the heart of what make a story good. You have to actually care about the characters, especially when it comes to a story like Sword Art Online, where I'm supposed to be scared that our favorite character is gonna die. How am I supposed to bond with this character? And it's not that Kirito is bad as a person. He doesn't have the character depth to even be considered a bad person. And that's the issue. Characters like Light from Death Note. He's an obnoxious piece of shit, but he has a personality outside of his main storyline that makes him actually a likable character despite his shitty ethics. Kirito is like toast without butter. He has a story, a place to end up at the end, but everything in between just has absolutely no relevance or any change on his character whatsoever. As I said, Kirito starts one way and he ends the same way. He just meets these random characters that have barely any story relevance. They usually have like one piece of story relevance. And I'm just sat there watching thinking, who is this character? Why are they here? If they had cut down the amount of characters they tried to make us actually care about and just focused on the main maybe five characters it just would have been so much better give me the pen give me the fucking pen at this point half of the time i was just watching and thinking why is this relevant filler episodes are totally fine and oftentimes enjoyable if you actually have interesting characters who have something to offer other than fan service the arc where atsuna and kirito were in this log cabin were a snooze fest because they have no chemistry. Sure, if you're a 14 year old, that might be interesting, wondering if they're gonna smash or what, which yes, we do get some fan service of a canonically 15 year old character, but I digress. For an anime with so much filler, it's actually impressive that the characters still lack so much depth because that's what filler episodes are for. And it might be me, feel free to call out. Do you think Kirito is an interesting character? Let me know, I, I'm so excited to see someone debate this in the comment section. Pacing is also an issue. And for the slow, stupid ass people watching like me, 
me, I'm watching and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They skip through years in the Aincrad arc with barely any explanation of what happened during those years. This, guys, guys, this pisses me off. <laughs> because surely the first few years in Aincrad would be the most interesting part, no? Watching how people would develop through the world and adapt to their new life. Isn't that a perfect way to develop the characters we're watching? Oh yeah, they're allergic to character development. I forgot, sorry. I promise that's the last time I talk about it. When I said the characters are probably the biggest reason people don't like Sword Art Online, I kind of lied to you. One of the biggest reasons people will usually give you for not liking Sword Art Online is because Kirito is just overpowered. From the very beginning, he is already overpowered because he was a beta player. I feel like the story would have been more compelling from the point of view of a person who was not a beta player. But the thing is, everyone in this anime is just trying to tell us how special Kirito is. Kirito is so overpowered that in one scene, multiple people are attacking him and he is taking barely any damage. How in the fuck is this supposed to be fun to watch? When the stakes are this low. And that's just it. If you believe that there is no possibility that your main character could fail, why are you watching? You know what's gonna happen in the end anyway. And there's gonna be no fun getting there. There's no strife in Kirito's life. There's no doubt throughout the series that Kirito will win and beat the game, let alone not die. Thing is, that can be said for a lot of anime, but I feel like other animes with better characters and character development can really get away with it because you actually feel like you went through it with the character. I, I didn't feel like that when I was watching Sword Art Online. To Sword Art Online's credit, there's actually a lot more development in the story throughout more seasons than just one and two. You know, they had movies and everything. But the OG series one and two was just a mess. I did enjoy Gun Girl Online. That was fun to watch for me, but I don't know. It's probably because I'm a first person shooter kind of girl. It's not even canon to the story, so I shouldn't really be speaking about it. I've pinned the hate train for Sword Art Online as the loss of potential. Not only that, but the hype around the series when it first came out really set the bar a bit too high for people. The expectation was up here and they were bound to be disappointed when their friend has recommended them the best anime ever and it's Sword Art Online. Also, once people see that something is hated, sometimes they just jump on the bandwagon and maybe some people can't even tell you why they dislike Sword Art Online and maybe they've never even watched it. You know, they just watch dumb videos like the one I'm finishing up right now and just make their mind that they don't like it. Guys, please watch the anime before you decide you hate it. As I said in the beginning of this video, there is nothing wrong with liking Sword Art Online. There are many reasons to like it and I touched on it a little in this video also, but personally, these are just my issues with the series and why I don't like it. Take them how you like. I would love to see people debate it in the comment section. Thank you so much for getting to the end of today's video. If you like this video, make sure to like this video. If you don't like this video, comment down below why you don't like this video, respectfully. Anyone being mean to me or any other fellow commenters will be swiftly removed from my comment section and my channel because I don't take that shit. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of their week. Bye bye.